Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I will be sharing 10 of my favorite sketches. If you watch my videos, I know you've seen me use these sketches before. The paper collection I'll be using is from Paper Rose Studios. This is their Dear Emma 12x12 paper collection. I don't use a lot of 12 by 12 paper, but I really like this collection since there are two sheets of these beautiful image and sentiments with a gold foil finish on them. The collection includes 10 double-sided pattern papers along with the two sheets with the gold foil cut apart images and sentiments. Now these are a very nice heavy weight. So I'll flip through them quickly so you can see everything that's included. There are lots of lovely floral designs in pinks and purples. There's a beautiful leaf pattern. There are two different wood grains. There's this nice dark color and also a lighter color. And I love that on the back side of the papers, there's a more tone on tone design. So we have some polka dots and stripes in pink and also purple. Paper Rose does sell a similar version of this collection in the six by six size but it doesn't include any of the foil accents. In this video, I'll only be using the 12 by 12 papers. If you are interested in any of the products I use in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get started with card design number one. And the sketches aren't in any specific order. These are just 10 of my favorites. This first sketch is from Sweet Sunday. This is number 300. Sweet Sunday no longer makes card sketches, but their website is still available. And I do have links for all of the sketch sites over on my coordinating blog post. That link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcotte.com. I do wanna mention the card sketches are not mine. I do not design card sketches. I found all of them online from free sources. When the sketches don't already provide measurements, I do add my own measurements. And the measurements are for American Standard A2 size cards, five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. The measurements I provide on the card sketches are generally for the pattern paper. Then I add an additional eighth of an inch for those cardstock layers. Sometimes I'll add a fourth of an inch if I want a wider mat. Card sketches really are for inspiration. You can follow them exactly, or you can change up different elements of the sketch to work best for you. This is a great sketch for featuring two different pattern papers. I'll use a tone on tone for those narrow strips and the more featured pattern paper on the wider panel. It has the really large circle, so you could put a sentiment or an image there. For this card, I'm using one of the sentiment cut aparts. I used a stitch circle die to cut out the sentiment and layered it on a dark purple die cut. And I did pop up that sentiment using some foam dimension. For embellishments, I'm adding some purple gem stickers. Now I am putting them lower than what's indicated on the card sketch. I didn't want to put them over that beautiful floral paper. So there is my finished card and I did make a total of four. For two of the cards, I use different cut aparts. This beautiful floral design in a picture. And I decided to leave off a sentiment. Since I will be donating the majority of the cards, sometimes the local charity likes to have a few cards without any sentiment. Now moving on to card design number two. The card sketch is from MFT. This is number 416. And if you don't know what MFT stands for, it's my favorite things. And currently they share a new sketch every Wednesday on their blog. When I use this sketch, I like to have a tone on tone pattern for the background. Sometimes I'll use cardstock, but I like to have pattern paper whenever possible. I'll have my featured pattern paper for that larger panel. And then underneath is that narrow strip. This is the perfect place to add a sentiment. For this card, I decided to use black cardstock for all of the layers. It adds a really nice contrast with the light pink. I've already stamped out the sentiment, just a little note to say. And this is from Paper Roses Hello 4x6 stamp set. It has a lot of great sentiments to go along with the sentiment hello, but I think this part works fine without the hello. Now generally when I use this sketch, 
I layer both that featured pattern paper and the sentiment strip together. This sketch has the little heart, which really just indicates an embellishment. And I decided to go with one of the flower dies from Paper Roses, Sophie die set. So there is my finished card. And again, I did make four using this design. With 12 by 12 paper, it's easy to make multiples. For card design number three, this sketch is from OWH. This is number 218. And OWH stands for Operation Right Home. It was a nonprofit charity, but they closed down, I believe, the end of 2015. Might have been 2016. But they have a huge assortment of sketches, and all of their sketches include measurements. Currently, this is my favorite sketch. Sometimes I change when new sketches come out, but this is my go-to sketch that I'll use all the time. It's perfect for featuring some pretty pattern paper, and then it has the banner area for a sentiment. For this card, I'm using pink cardstock for the background. I have a wood grain pattern for that narrow strip. And then I'm using the beautiful floral paper for that featured design. And it's fun that this sketch also includes measurements for those matted layers. I've already stamped out the sentiment, thanks. And this is from Paper Roses, Hello Thanks Fine Script Stamp Set. I'll cut a fishtail on the left side and then layer this piece on some black cardstock. Then I'll cut out the layer to follow that fishtail. Now before I adhere it to the card, I will put some scrap cardstock pieces on the very left side where it goes off of that floral paper. And that will just help keep everything at the same level. Then to finish up the card, I'll add a few small black gem stickers. It's a very simple design and I generally stick to the measurements other than for the sentiment. So there is my finished card and I made a total of four using this sketch. Whenever I need multiples of the same card, this is the sketch I'll turn to. And I think it works better with 12 by 12 paper versus the six by six size. Now moving on to card design number four. The card sketch is from Mojo Monday. This is number 547. Mojo Monday is one of the first sketch sites I started following. After 500 sketches, they did close down their blog. Now, one of their sketch designers, Julie Tillman, she decided to start making a few more Mojo Monday sketches on her own blog. Not sure how many she ended up with, but I think it was at least another 50. And this is one of her newer sketch designs. The original Mojo Monday sketches did not include measurements, but when Julie started doing them on her blog, she did include measurements. So that's really nice. I'm featuring three different pattern papers on this card. I have the wood grain for the background. Now I could have cut that entire panel four inches by five and a quarter inches, but I decided since most of it will be covered up, I just cut some narrow strips for the very top and bottom. So nobody has to know I didn't put a full wood grain panel on the back of the card. I added this lovely leaf pattern paper for that larger piece. Then I'm using some purple and white polka dot for the narrow panel on the left. I have a stitch circle die cut and I used some white shimmer cardstock for that. And now I'll add one of the floral cut aparts that's included in the paper pack. There's lots of the sentiments and there's also several of the floral images. And I just fussy cut this out, leaving a very narrow white border along the outside. Using that same dark green cardstock, I cut a banner for the upper right hand corner and decided to leave off the sentiment for the floral card. For the other two cards, I did use one of the sentiment cut aparts. And instead of the circle, I decided to keep it as the square. So it's one of the ways that you can modify a sketch. Just because there's a circle doesn't mean you have to add a circle. For card design number five, this sketch is from Sketch Saturday. This is number 694. And they are still sharing a new sketch almost every Saturday. If you need lots of sketch inspiration, they now have over 700 sketches to use. I usually head over to their website at least once a week to check out the newest sketch. If it looks fun, I'll go ahead and print it out and figure out the measurements. When I use this sketch, I like to feature two different pattern papers. 
the busier pattern on the top and more of a muted or tone on tone design on the bottom. For the two banners in the upper right hand corner, I generally use cardstock. So for this card, I'm using the dark purple for the larger piece, and I have some white shimmer cardstock for that smaller banner. For the circle element, you could put a sentiment or an image here. I'll be featuring one of the cut aparts from the paper pack, this fun frame with the beautiful purple flowers in the lower right hand corner. I did put some foam dimension on the back side before attaching this frame. For the sentiment, I'll add the word hi, and I cut this out from Paper Rose's outlined alphabet die set. Then to finish off the card, I'll add a few embellishments. This is the clear crystal mix from Paper Rose. There are four different sizes included in the mix, and I'm adding just two of them in the upper right hand corner. They don't have any adhesive on the back, so I will need to add a drop of liquid adhesive, and I'm using my embellishment wand to help pick those up. So I'll just press those in place, and this glue does dry clear, so you won't be able to see it later. So there is my finished card, and I did make a total of four. For the other two cards, I used one of the sentiment cut aparts. This is another sketch. I do tend to follow the measurements, except for that circle element. That one I change up all the time, just depending on the image or the sentiment I want to add to my card. For card design number six, this is from Sugar P Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number 23. Now this is a newer sketch site to me, although they're not making new sketches at all, but their website is still available. For this sketch, I've used tone on tone paper for the background and then had my featured pattern paper for that large circle. But for this card, I'm using my featured pattern paper for the background and I'll have a sentiment for that large circle. You could also add an image in that three inch circle. I'm using this beautiful pink floral design. I layered it first on some pink cardstock and then on black cardstock. I have the lighter wood grain for that small panel behind the circle. Instead of that large circle, I'll be using Paper Rose's Hello Layered Oval Die. One cuts out the word hello with that oval frame, and then there's another oval piece for that background. I also cut that wood grain panel just a little bit smaller. I think I did two inches instead of the two and a fourth that's indicated on the sketch. In the upper left hand corner, there are two small banners and I just cut these by hand. I used the same dark pink cardstock for the larger banner and some light pink cardstock for the smaller banner. I'll adhere those in place using some liquid adhesive. And I will add a small scrap piece of cardstock on the right side of the dark pink banner before I adhere the smaller banner. So there is my finished card and I did make four using this design. Since I will be donating a lot of the cards in this video, I'm not always adding foam dimension or bling. Now moving on to card design number seven. This is another OWH sketch. This is 219. This is another sketch I've used probably hundreds of times. This is a great sketch when you're working your way through a paper pad and you just have these narrow strips. That top strip is two and a half inches wide and the bottom is only one and a fourth inches wide. I like to use a featured pattern paper for that top piece and usually a tone on tone or muted design for the narrow strip at the bottom. There's also a very narrow strip that goes across the card and I'll generally use solid cardstock for that. For the very background of the card, I'm using solid cardstock. You could use pattern paper, but since you don't see very much of it, I think the cardstock works better. Then you can feature that pattern paper in another area on a card. I layered the two pattern papers on some dark green cardstock. I'm putting my card front onto a card base. And for many cards, I like to leave that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Most of the backgrounds of my cards are four inches by five and a quarter inches. Then I'll add an additional eighth of an inch for that first cardstock layer. If I don't want any of the white card base showing, I may add a fourth of an inch for that background cardstock piece. Now I am changing up this sketch a bit. Instead of the circle on the right side of the card, 
I'll be adding that circle element or this frame cut apart on the left side. And that's because of the large floral design in the lower left hand corner. I think it looks better shifting it to the left side of the card. I'm adding the sentiment high inside the frame using some dark pink cardstock, trying to make sure to get them nice and straight. And now I'll put three small stitch circle die cuts in the upper right hand corner. And I use Paper Roses Stitch Holly die set for those small circles. So there is my finished card and I did make four using this design. For the other two cards I use this beautiful floral image cut apart inside the circle. Now moving on to card design number eight. This card sketch is from MFT. This is number 494. This is a great sketch to have some tone on tone paper for the background or some cardstock. Then another tone on tone design for that background strip and then maybe your featured pattern paper in the oval. Now I'm changing that up just a bit. Instead, I have my busier pattern paper for the background using the wood grain pattern for that center piece. I'll layer that leaf paper on some dark green cardstock. And on this card, I have the wider cardstock layer. So the leaf paper is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And the green cardstock layer is a full A2 size at four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. For the oval, I'm using the purple and white polka dot paper. And instead of adding an image to the card, I'm putting a bold sentiment. This is the hand lettered thanks die by Paper Rose. I cut it out from the same dark green cardstock. I'll put liquid adhesive on the back and adhere it to the lower area of the oval. I'll also add a couple of purple heart die cuts and a small banner in the upper left hand corner. Just adhere those in place using some liquid adhesive. Most of the time for the banners, I simply cut them myself, but you can also use a banner die. Paper Rose sells several different sets. So there is my finished card and I did make four using this design. This is also a great sketch to add a stamped or die cut image. You could put your sentiment strip and have your image right above it. I think this is the first time I used a large sentiment instead of that narrow sentiment strip for this sketch. Now moving on to card design number nine. The card sketch is from Sugar Pea Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number 51. This sketch has quickly become one of my favorites and I've probably only used it about four or five times. You can easily feature at least two pattern papers with this sketch. So I have the wood grain for the very top narrow strip and my featured pattern paper for that larger area. I rounded the left corners top and bottom, layered both of those pattern papers on some black cardstock. For the background, I'm using some pink cardstock that has a pearlescent finish, but you could also use a tone on tone pattern there. Layered the background on some black cardstock put my card front onto a card base, leaving that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. One of the reasons I love this sketch is this unique banner. And I know I could add this banner shape to any of my cards. I cut it the same as the other fishtails. And then on the two sides, I just angle my scissor in slightly to get that fun shape. I've already stamped out the sentiment. I've been thinking of you. And I decided to cut the fishtail at the very end instead of that angle that's indicated on the card sketch. And instead of the circle, I'll be adding this pink heart die cut. I'm also adding the sentiment on top of that heart. Before adhering the sentiment in place, I am putting some scrap cardstock pieces where the sentiment strip goes over the heart die cut. Then I'll put liquid adhesive on the back and adhere it in place. And I have the very right side of the sentiment going off of the pattern paper. Then for a final finishing touch, I'll add some more of the clear crystals. On this sketch, there's some of those small stars and that indicates where to add embellishments. But for some reason, they only have four stars. And I feel that it needs to have at least five for that good odd number. So I did add five different clear crystals. So there is my finished card and I did make four using this design. This is definitely one of my favorite cards in this set, but do let me know which card is your favorite. 
Now moving on to my final card design, number 10. This sketch is from OWH, it's number 154. And this may be my most used card sketch. I pull it out all the time when I'm finishing off a paper pad. It's perfect for featuring those small pattern paper scraps and some of those narrow strips if you still have some left over. I've used this card sketch so often I know the measurements by heart. For the background of the card, it's very rare that I use a pattern paper, but if I do, it would be a tone-on-tone -tone design. For this card, I'm using some shimmer cardstock, and I added a fun texture using the hand stitching to embossing folder from Paper Rose, and I'm using the deboss side. For the pattern paper squares, I decided to stick with just two different designs. I have the pink polka dots and the pink stripes, although you can use four different patterns. For the very bottom of the card, there's that 3 4 inch strip. I'm using this narrow pattern paper strip that's on the very end of the 12 by 12 sheet. So you can see on the back side, it had the paper rose label. It's nice that they included a pattern on the opposite side, so there's zero waste when you're using the 12 by 12 paper. I cut out a pink stitched circle die cut and added one of the floral cut-aparts in the center. And this is another card that I decided to pass on the sentiment. In that circle, you could also add a sentiment, or you could add an image in the circle and put a sentiment on that narrow strip. So there is my finished card, and again, I did make four using this design. Now here's another look at the 40 cards I made using Paper Rose Studios Dear Emma 12 by 12 paper collection. This is a beautiful collection, and I love the addition of the gold foil sentiment cut apart sheet. If you are interested in any of the products I use in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Paper Rose is located in Australia, and they ship their products worldwide, but you can also purchase their products here in the US, and I do have links for both locations provided in the description box below. This video was so fun to make using many of my favorite sketches. I do try to find new sketches, but sometimes it's nice to go back to those go-to designs. There are hundreds of sketches out there, and I could probably pull out another 10 favorites and do a second video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.